David Whalen from Correct Handed Comics, and I'm watching Catch the Craze. This episode of Catch the Craze is sponsored by Catch the Crazies, number three on Kickstarter, April 29th. <laughs> Georgie, what do we have on today? All right, so today we're going to have Mr. David Wayland. He's the uh, writer of uh, Will Aliens Do My Homework and The Offspring. And on Get Your Meds, we're going to have Graphic Boost. We're going to talk about graphic novels and COVID and how they did in sales. And also, we have a couple of uh, new uh, segments that we'll be talking about, so we got to get to it. So if the aliens don't do my homework, you're going to get a boost. Peace! <laughs> For independence all around Giving you a platform to spread your word all over town Cast the craze is the place to promote to your fans With the dream of Medina and Sam the crazy man Subscribe to our show and never miss an episode It's time to get your mans, listen to us on the go Updated every week, we never miss a day Join the squad, come on in, it's time to cast the craze If you are an independent, cast the craze Making moves on your own, cast the craze On your grind in the streets, cast the craze Join the movement, catch the craze! Yeah, George, we did it again. Come on now, you know you want to do it. Catch the craze. Welcome to Cast the Craze Podcast. I am your host with the most, Sam the Crazy Man Vera, and I am with... This is George the Dreamer Medina. What up, Sammy? Why don't you take off that tie? All right, it's a little stuffy. This is you George like the Dreamer Medina. That's how I roll, baby. <laughs> that's, that's how I, I roll. That's how it's I do like, it. That's how we do up. it. It's stuffed like, stuffed up. take the tie off. <laughs> What's Listen, up, man. George? I am chillando. I am chilling, my man. Chillando. Yes, sir. Uh, yes. We have another fun episode. Welcome, everybody, to Catch the Craze. Yes. April 16th is the day. Word. And uh, mm-hmm. we have a lot to do today, man. We, we're adding some things today. We're, we're, we're going in today. We're going in. We're going in for real. That's right. And before we start, make sure you subscribe. Make sure you like. Make yes. sure you comment. Yes. Make sure you do all those things. Yes. And uh, that way you're always up to date with the shows. And in the know. As far in the as know. I, no Gary news Gary. is good news with Gary Gnews. Interesting. Interesting. Very interesting. <laughs> wow. <laughs> yeah. You know what? I don't even know what that laugh means anymore. No. Like, it, it, it just it just comes I on. I just need somebody to laugh at my jokes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. So, one, one quick announcement before we even get started here. Don't forget that on uh, April 29th, we're going to have Kickstarter number three. Of the crazies. Issue three is going to be out April 29th. So make sure you get on the launch page. Make sure you follow it so that when it goes live, you are one of the first ones to pledge because the first day pledges are going to get a treat. Okay. We are doing something very different this year. We're going to do um, numbered covers. So we're going to have 100 covers are going to be printed of each book one, two, and three, and they're going to be numbered. So if you're the first pledger on day one, you get issue one of 100. If you're the second, two of 100. If you're the fifth, fifth, one, so forth. So you want to be number one. You want to be the first one in there because those are going to be collected. So if uh, I'm the third one, wouldn't it be three of 97? No, because there are going to be a total of 100 printed. But there's no longer so 100. You, two are gone. So that's right. But there's still 100. So you're going to be <laughs> the third person to have gotten a, co- a, a copy of the 100 that were printed. Sounds suspicious. Sounds suspicious. Hey, man. You know, sometimes I got to explain to you things like you're four. Please four explain. Por favor. Because <laughs> I don't comprehend, though. <laughs> so that's what's going on in that's the crazy world of the crazies. Yes. So don't forget. Yeah, definitely. You want to. You definitely want to. Get on there. Kickstarter number three is coming. Absolutely. Kickstarter number three is coming. And uh, also, 
Um, if you'd like to sponsor an episode of Catch the Craze, in our profile, there's a link to the sponsorship page. A lot of affordable rates. You can pick one episode, multiple episodes, cross episodes between what's in the box, the Crazy Nintendo Less. Oh, it's a yeah. great idea. Great way to, for you to promote your Kickstarter or your, right. bo- your future books, your new toy line, your new album that you just released. You got that song. You got to go perform. A That's great right. way for you to get some uh, uh, your, the word out. So That's right. Hit the link in our summary, and it'll take you directly to the page, and it's easy. You select, click, bang. Done. Done, boom. son. Boom, bam, boom. Yes. Yeah, we have. Uh, we definitely are expanding the show as far as segments go. So while we always have had the Get Your Med segment, and we always have had a special guest that, that come on the show to talk about their, their product, we are also expanding it to two new segments uh, that we started last week on the show for April, and one of them is Indie News. Yes. And the other one is the shameless plug. <laughs> you almost forgot. He's like, so, yeah. So, he's like, so I'm like, the oh. shameless. Yeah, you ever heard about that whole uh, thing about when you look this way versus when you look that way, when you're thinking of something? One of them is basically you're trying to remember, and the other one is you're trying to make some stuff up. And depending on which way you look is what you're trying to do. So if you look up this way, sometimes – He's like, okay, wait, I forgot something. If you're looking at this one, you're basically trying to make it up. So if, if you look, look to, to the right, right it's one it's way memory, or the other. Yeah, and you I, I don't know which side. For me, it would have to be which... left um, trying to make it up because I'm always looking to my right. <laughs> you're always looking to your right because you're always yeah. trying to remember stuff? Yes. <laughs> I'm always, yeah, I, it, yeah. Whenever you talk to me and I get in thought, you'll see me do this. I'll, I'll look up and then I get quiet and then people are like, uh... <laughs> is everything all right? I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm thinking. <laughs> I'm thinking. I'm thinking. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm thinking. creating. Yes. Um, anyway, anyway, I digress. So, yeah, so we do have new segments coming up. We're going to have some fun today. So, uh, yeah, on the so, show today. Yes. Well, what's on the show? Um, uh, you, 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 you. Well, on the show, we have, uh, yeah, we did a little soft open. We have David Whalen on the show. Yes. And uh, he's going to be talking to us about books that I see. I'm on his website, uh, which is correcthandedcomics.com and we have I've seen two books The Offspring yes. and Will Aliens Do My Homework so we'll talk to him about that today yes, please. he's a writer see you know how he came up with these ideas I always like to talk we always like to find out what was in their minds when they were creating these things so we'll be talking about that and then uh, we have our topic of the day which is graphic boost yes. and we'll be talking a little bit about what happened during the, during the pandemic and uh sales of graphic novels yes that so that, that's interesting that is interesting but uh before we go into that let's go into in the news <laughs> welcome to in the news <laughs> You know, I haven't seen it. I haven't seen it. So I have no idea what it is. Oh, it's going to be a surprise. I can't wait. Uh, so I think the news that's surprises. relevant and it's going to be go- talked about all the way through June is Todd McFarlane recently announced 2021 is the year of Spawn. And if you didn't see it already, head over to our channel and go see the Crazy Nintendo Last episode number 44, where I basically talk about Spawn, my collection and of toys and um, comics. And my homage, my uh, uh, to McFarlane and what he's done. Uh, I think that's pretty awesome. I think he definitely represents the little guy in a big way, right? He was the guy that stepped out and took risks and defined his destiny and redefined the industry, the comic book industry and the toy industry. And um, we're just waiting for him to do the same with the movie industry. He's having a hard time there. But um, this is exciting. He's adding three new titles to his roster. King Spawn, Scourge, and um, the other guy, Gunslinger Spawn, Gunslinger, and um, which is pretty cool. Gunslinger is an awesome character. Is it King Spawn? Is that what it's called? Yes. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. But, yes. Was, for some reason, yeah. I thought it was like medieval Spawn or something. No, nah, it's King like Spawn. That. Yeah. Long oh, live okay. the king! Oh, and he's right. announced he's got a roster of over twenty or so um, creators, writers, and, and illustrators that are on the project as well and which is pretty dope so that's um mm-hmm. and i will be doing follow-ups on the crazy tell less on that and some um spotlights on some of those creative uh creators behind the new endeavor which launches in june you'll have four titles per month so you have sp- each one each different <coughs> week will be a different title so every yeah. week you can go into the store and get something from the house of mcfarlane 
Yeah. It's interesting how you broke it down, basically saying that, you know, 20, anyone under the age of 28, I guess, has no idea how it all began. And he wants to definitely mm -hmm. get them into the know as far as like what Spawn was about. So he's got these number ones coming out in June. And I'm sure, dude, I mean, whenever he does anything in social media, you know, his, his fans are going to follow. They're going to go. They're yeah. going to gonna check it out. They're going to do what they're going to do. So this, this is, yeah, this is very, very good. The year of Spawn. It's huge. Um, he's calling it. So, yeah. yeah it's so. huge. So with that said, would you like <clears throat> to go into uh, the next topic? Oh, we're rolling right through. Yeah, we're rolling it, right through. Let's see. Get your meds. Oh, actually, no. It's time for your medicine. And the topic of the day is graphic boost. Graphics boost. novel sales during COVID. Why well, that we, topic, George? So I was I was actually reading um, yesterday. I was online and I was checking out some of the, uh, you know, just what's going on in comics. And I, I ran into an. Uh, this is an old. Um, I cannot, when I say old, I mean like a, a Forbes article right. from. Um, it was from October 2020, which is towards the end of last year. Obviously, the pandemic had just hit, and then so I so I went. To, it, was, it was like a, a rabbit hole of, of just information, and I realized that there was a rise of 130 million dollars in graphic novels across all channels um, in 2019. So 2019 had seen a rise in like sales for comics, right? So everybody thought, oh man, 2020 is going to be even bigger because if we sold that many comics in 2019, it, we're going to kill it in 2020. Right. And then COVID hit, right? COVID just, you know, they were, you know, we went through things it. up. Yo, you know, DC, Marvel, you know, fired a bunch of people, you know, Diamond stopped distributing. There was that time where, where, where you know, comic book stores had no had nothing from the big two coming in you know they were wondering are we going to survive this right and then but suddenly graphic novel sales went up and i think a lot of that was obviously because graphic novels are books that can be sold in not just comic book shops but bookstores yes you know what i mean which essentially says to, says to us we need to start putting these things in graphic novels so that in case something like this happens again, the sales are still there because the floppies, as much as I love comics and we all love comics, I've always, I've always said this. It's not where the money is. It's not where you're going to make your money. This is, you know, they give these things away. I remember going into conventions and they were giving away comic books because those are just, they're just giveaways. They, they don't make money off of those things. You know what I mean? So, it was interesting to, 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 to look at all of these numbers. I have another theory. Oh, go for it. So we've, we're in the age of instant consumption. <clears throat> we're in the age of, of just, what do you think, you know, each season comes out on Netflix or, or Prime where they just put out a season instead of an episode because no one wants to wait. So I think that same science was applied to literature because you can get the entire collected issues in one graphic novel and instead of waiting. So now when you have social distancing and you have it's hit or miss what stores will be open and what won't be and then distributions are delayed and all that stuff. If you can get it collected, you don't have to have to try to play lotto with whether or not your book's going to get it to the store, whether or not it's going that store is going to be closed today, whether or not they impose new restrictions. Now you have the entire collected series that you can just go through in your leisure and get the whole thing together. So it makes it that much more desirable because it's more convenient. Um. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think that. What's happened, well, when you talk about, you know, binge watching, I think that a lot of these... That's the word. <laughs> yeah, a lot of these companies, a lot of these companies like Disney Plus now, is kind of stepping away from the binge watching thing. They, they, they're they giving us episodes every week. So, like, if you if you saw The Mandalorian or if you saw WandaVision, those things come out weekly now. You, you they, They're making I don't us... Have, they're I, I can't afford go back. Disney Plus because I'm a brokepreneur. <laughs> I'm just saying... <laughs> Um, but the experts, according to some of these um, some of these articles, what they were saying was the reason for that was because parents with schools 
not being open or the kids not being able to go to school, they were trying to get as much as much reading material for their kids that were now stuck at home. So they were ordering a lot of these books and they were ordering, you know, a lot of these graphic novels to kind of bring them in. As a matter of fact, um, Dave Pikey, uh, Pilkey, Dave Pilkey or Doc Pilkey's, the graphic novel, uh, Dogman, mm. you know, you know, talk about the, the creator of Dogman, Grime and Punishment, sold more than 1.2 million copies in 2020. Jeff Kinney's uh, half comic, half novel diary of a wimpy kid, The Deep End, sold right. 921,000 copies of those books. So they were selling, and this is according to Bleeding Cool. I just cool. won 10,000 of those copies. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I want to be able to sell 10,000. According to Bleeding Cool, graphic novels uh, had one of the most significant increases, which saw sales increase by 29% in 2020 based on 2019 numbers. So there was actually a raise. Now, the, the, this, is, this is the interesting thing, right? And this is where I guess us as independent um, artists and publishers and creators of books, we have to find a, a place in the retail equation, right? For the millions of readers of Dogman who will eventually age out. Eventually those kids that were reading that book are gonna age out and they're gonna need something that's more mature. Yeah. And that's where they've already, they're already used to reading those, those graphic novels. That's where we kind of have to come in and say, okay, well, here you go. You're, you're a little older now. Here, here's a book for you to read. Right. So that's an interesting take also. I was reading that uh, Forbes magazine back in October 2020 had an article saying that, you know, maybe that's where we are. If comics can, can hold on to those new readers, 2020 will look like just a bump in the road in the rearview mirror. So there's hope. There's hope. Yeah. Well, you know, I think I could tell you, I think um, 50... <clears throat> 50 or 60% of the, whether it's a Kickstarter, Indiegogo, the crowdfundings that I've, I've supported, mm -hmm. I did it for the graphic novels. Mm -hmm. Like I see right. what, cause they were collected. Want the whole thing, I wanted the yeah. whole thing. Um, yes. because I don't know if I'm ever going to pick up that indie again. Um, so I'm like, all right, let me get the whole thing and let's see, um, if it was worth it. And, um, because I like, it looks better on your bookshelf, number one. You can always go back. Like, for instance, yeah. you know, Infinity Gauntlet, which was probably one of the first ones I've ever purchased back in the days when it first was produced, the collected edition. I didn't get the individuals. I got the collected. And I still have it. And once a year, I'll open it up and I'll go through it again. You read it, yeah. Yeah, yeah. and it sits right on my shelf. And so, yeah. um, because, I mean, like in my basement, I got boxes and boxes of comics that I've collected yeah. throughout the years. And I'm like, you know what? I don't want to have to rummage through to try to find, like for instance, when I did the spawn segment, I saw that. Yeah, I found through bunch. Yes, in that box, I found the five issues of Moon Knight done by Stephen Platt that I have bagged and board. So I'm like, oh, I'm gonna Stephen Platt. I'm gonna do an episode of of what's in the box with that uh, with Stephen Platt uh, because it was I was a big fan of his. But I, had I not done the Spawn episode, I wouldn't know it was in that specific box. It was in the back of that Spawn um, box. Um, yeah. uh, well, the the other thing I think about, like you're saying, the collected issues and, and then the graphic novels, I think what happens is if you're a collector of comics, right, you don't want to damage your single issues. Uh, you don't want to damage those issues that, you know, you collected. So you read the graphic novel so you can read the story and you keep your single issues packed away yes. in that protective uh, poly bag. So that's like, another yeah. reason not to. One of the things I did with number ones, if I purchased a number one, I purchased two, yeah, one to read yeah. and one to bag. Right, um, right. And so like in my bagging board, you'll see the number ones are double-sided because I have two inside of it. I have the one I read and the one I didn't. <laughs> How do you know which one you read and which one you didn't? Uh, you could tell. You uh, could tell. Because uh, it's all like, it's all messed up. The, the, the spine is all. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was I was looking at one of my Sam and Twitches. That was tough. Uh, I must have read that one. It was one of my favorite episodes, and I was uh, episodes, um, issues and uh, issues. it was it was tore up. And uh, but um, you know, if I like something, I'll go back and I'll reread it. It's just like a movie. I watch The Godfather a billion times. I watch Home Alone a billion times. And you know, yeah, it's yeah. like you can't get enough that, of it every Christmas. Yeah. Yeah, no, it's true. I mean, I, th I think graphic, the, and also the shelf life of a graphic novel is a lot longer than that of a, of a comic, right? Because every, every comic come out every month. Yes. So if it came out in, it comes out in April, by May, that thing is old news. Whereas that graphic novel that you keep on your shelf, it, 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 the, the shelf life of that thing is 
forever. You know, it becomes right. it becomes a piece of literature in in a way for us. Right. You know, it's like, oh, did you read the the uh, you know the Killing Joke or whatever? And there's tons of tons of those. And I think that plus, you think about it, right? You can get those at a Barnes and Nobles at a bookstore. You can you can go into a bookstore because it has the ISBN number. You know, the ISBN. You, that that goes into into now now it goes into not just a comic book shop but it also goes into into uh, one of the major bookstores yes. and you can sell it there which is how they get the data which is how they get a lot of the data uh, as far as like what's sold I mean not not that not that individual comic books don't have ISBNs because they do right but for us like you know the little guys you know we'll, we'll spend some money on ISBNs on graphic novels not on our single issues that we're gonna we're gonna print out right. so. Right, right, and I think it's I think that's the best way to go uh, because number one, once you have the ISBN num- uh, number, and um, you register it and everything, it's in the database, and mm-hmm. and and bookstores can determine whether or not they want to get it or not, and carry it. Uh, so, and then it's you get more. The opportunities are greater for an independent if you get those that barcode and that ISBN. Yeah. Um, because from a distribution standpoint, from a reach standpoint. Uh, critics get a hold of it, you know. So I think it's always, um, you know, we're forbidden. The whole thing is to collect it and to put it out in one nice big hard. I want a hardcover book um, for forbidden. There's gonna be a soft cover version and a hardcover version. And, yeah. Uh, um, and I'm telling you, man, those things I, I, to me. And even like when I was reading that article, I was like, damn, that's interesting. Because like one of the things that it said, it said COVID-19 pandemic predictably damaged the comics industry in the United States during its peak months. Because it did, it damaged it. During the peak, it damaged it. Yep. But the segment as a whole held up surprisingly well and even experienced significant growth. And the growth was experienced in manga and graphic novels yes. for younger readers. Graphic novels outperformed other book categories across trade book retail channels, seeing weekly gains of as much as 30% over 2019. Yes, I find that because I created my new IG account for The Art of Samuel, and I found that the drawings that I do are more, that are more manga-esque, I get a lot more feedback. Yeah, that's um, big, man. Manga's huge. Yeah, it's crazy. Um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know, but it, 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 I'm glad that comics is doing well. I'm glad that you see that there's, that, that there's a spike because people want to escape. And what better way to escape than with comic books? Sure. And reading stories. Yeah. You know, I think one of the things that I enjoy when I'm doing, like, what's in the box, I know that I got to separate a couple hours to sit down and read whatever book. You know, I wait, speaking of the what's in the box, you know, I read Jer Winsborough's, I read 200 pages in six hours. Can you read that? What did you read? Uh, uh, is it Christian Alois? Christian Alois. Oh, yeah. his book. Okay, yeah. Yeah, it's yeah. a living. Yeah. So I started reading it. So it was about it's about two hundred and something pages, and I started reading it, and then um, a lot of a lot of things were happening in, with the, the House of Craze, and a lot of things fell on my plate. So then I had to lock myself in the room, and I read for six hours straight. <laughs> I read the whole thing front to back. Can you read yeah. it? I, I, I was impressed by myself. I felt like I was cramming for 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 uh, for an exam in college. <laughs> it was crazy. I, you know what though? I'm also impressed by Christian Alua's that he kept you reading that book for 200 pages nonstop. So that's very impressive on his part too. Congratulations to Christian. Because yes, I found a lot of things that are very relatable, um, yeah. and I found the humanity in the book. So that and I thought that was pretty cool. Yeah, wow. and for those and for those who don't know what the heck we're talking about, it's a living is a book by uh, one of our indie creator friends. He's actually an, uh, a freelance artist. Yes. His name is Christian Lewis, who wrote a book called uh, "It's a Living," and mm-hmm. it's basically it's almost like a handbook on how um, on how he goes about his freelance business because it is a business. He's a businessman, yes. yes. you know, and uh, it, it's yeah, it's 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 cool that you that you actually and you, and you actually have a what's in the box episode of it. Which is about an hour long. <laughs> yes, yes, because there was a lot. I, I'm just taking note. That was another thing. I kept taking notes, highlighting right. sections. It's like I got to talk about this. This is really cool. Boom, 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 boom. Uh, so you know, uh, I I took a lot of notes, and then you'll find that when I was doing the what's in the box, I was like why did I highlight this section? And then I had to read it during the what's in the box, and I'm like, oh, now I get it. Well, this is why. And uh, you know, so it was a uh, it was interesting, interesting homework. Uh, you know. Again, if you want to be featured on What's in the Box, just hit us up. Um, the link is below. Just reach out to us at contact at castacraze.com. 
That's right. That's right. So this so was yeah, another so episode of Get Your Mints. Yes, sir. And uh, we have our guest in the waiting room. So we have two oh. people in the waiting room. Oh, 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 who's sneaking in? I don't know. But I have to <laughs> view because one's not till 8.30. Um, <laughs> so we got to see what that's all about. Um, we're going to go to commercial. And when we come back, we will have David Whelan. And the commercial is... Welcome to the Crazy Nintendo Less. Welcome to the Crazy Nintendo Less. The show where I give it to you in 10 minutes or under, and if I don't. 10 minutes or under, and if I don't. All right, welcome to the Crazy Nintendo Less. This is the show where I give it to you in 10 minutes or under, and if I don't. And if I don't, I won't. Not All right, we're back with Cast the Craze Podcast, and uh, we have a very special guest on the show today, comic book creator David Whalen, and he has several titles that we're going to talk about. But before we do, we'd like to talk about you. So, David, who are you? What do you do? Hey, guys, first of all, thanks for having me on. I really appreciate it. Yeah, uh, so yeah, I'm David Whalen. I'm a creator, uh, the creator of Correct Handed Comics, where I write and illustrate and letter and color and uh, publish uh, multiple comic books. I have an ongoing series that's about to hit issue 15 next month called The Offspring. That's nice. an action uh, adventure thriller, um, kind of like kind of like in the in the same realm of like supernatural like that kind of idea um but a, i'd say a little bit more in, intense in certain areas it deals with a lot of of uh family issues on some level uh so it was things that i saw growing up that uh from families that i knew from my own family from from real life issues that were going on that i wanted to wrap into superhero stories um and it's really been uh my passion project for the last really a uh, couple of decades putting it together and finally being able to get to issue 15 uh, and hoping to be able to get 50 issues mm -hmm. done in the next five or six years uh, wow. um, is really what I'm shooting for. I've got a bunch of one shots out. I love putting out 24 page one shots of different genres. Mm -hmm. I have a superhero one. I have a, a noir thriller uh, called Shady Lady. The superhero one is a superhero story called I Won't Stop. And I just put out uh, another 24 page action uh, one shot called "Will Aliens Do My Homework," awesome. and it comes from me uh, being a teacher. I'm, that's my day job. I'm an art teacher, and I was walking through the classroom, and I would had some third graders in with me doing their thing, and I, and I thought to myself, "What would I do right now if aliens attacked?" <laughs> and about two months later, I had a I had, about to two hours later, I had a script ready to go, uh, just that's writing amazing. it down as I was sitting there teaching. And uh, about uh, about three months later, um, I started drawing it and put it out this year, and, and I love it. It's, uh, it's I think it's a real fun, funny story. I've had a couple people talk to me about how they've never seen an art teacher as the <laughs> hero of the story, and I said, yeah, that's what I'm going for. There you go. That's awesome. Good for you, Dave. Good time. for you. That's it's about time our teachers time. become heroes. <laughs> <laughs> that's amazing man hey listen i, I know that, that you, you're teaching so how does that work as far as um you know through the zoom and stuff like that are you finding that you know is it challenging i mean to get these kids together to sit there and draw like i know i have some people who are teachers or friends who are teachers but never an, uh, like an art teacher so how does that work for you yeah it's a little tough i think a, a lot of people um unfortunately still see in the 21st century art music that kind of stuff as mm -hmm as not really as important right. as everything else as the other subjects. So that's something that, that I have been struggling with, with certain parents, not all parents, of course. I think yeah. that the good majority of parents and people in the world understand that art and music is one of the things that keeps us going as, soci as a society. Absolutely. No matter what society or culture you live in, art and music are always a part of it. Mm -hmm. um, just like I tell my students in class that art is not about drawing pretty pictures. You can do that with art, Mm -hmm. But art is about seeing and understanding your world better. Right. And, um, and it's been for certain parents who don't quite see that yet. Um, it's been a struggle. You know, you try to get the kids to be able to do their, their uh, work and turn it in through yeah. the Google classroom, through online mm -hmm. stuff, um, mm -hmm. especially in the middle of this year when we had to go full remote. 
Um, and sometimes you just kind of get the parents kind of ignore it. Sometimes the parents give, you know, the kids put in a half-hearted effort. But right. I would say that a good majority of my parents and students that I, uh, that I see every single day love art, love coming right. in and drawing, love communicating visually, um, and really do understand the, the, um, uh, the importance Mm-hmm. of what the arts uh, have to offer to society. It's not a frivolous thing that we can just forget about or get rid of in our schools. It's something that really uh, drives us forward as huma- as humans, as humanity. Absolutely. Um, and I think more people in the 21st century, it's amazing it took till the 21st century to get this far with it. Mm-hmm. Uh, but um, I think most people, most people are starting to realize that. And it's yeah. good. Very positive thing. Nice. Yeah, I, I think I, I think we see we see the importance of that even now with us being stuck at home. What, what do we do? We we pick up a book, we read comics. That's what we do. We were just talking about that right before you came on. How graphic novels have had a boost, and it's because kids are now home and parents are like, "We're gonna. I need to give you something to do. Here, here, read this book." You know. So yeah, that's oh, good. I'm, I'm happy you're doing it. Read a book. Yeah, any yeah. of those things. Love it. Yeah. No, absolutely. So how'd you get into comics? Yeah, so um, like a lot of people in my position, I always try to remind myself when things are going well that there are a million of me, <laughs> a million, a million guys and girls out there that are that are uh, putting out books and putting out good stories, putting out uh, uh, quality work um, to try to make sure that I keep pushing myself forward. I started um, as a young kid. I you know before I could read and write, I could draw. I was drawing. Um, my mom makes the joke that I popped out of the womb with a paintbrush in my hand, <laughs> uh, which I'll take it. That's awesome. And, uh, and I was lucky enough to have parents that supported me. By the time I was 14 years old, I was, uh, taking new figure drawing classes, mm-hmm. um, which wasn't something that most 14 year old, most parents would let their 14 year olds yeah. do. Uh, yeah. So I was very lucky to have parents that knew that, um, that it was something, the passion that I wanted to continue doing. So yeah. Um, at an early age, loved comic books. Uh, one of the things that really got me into character and understanding like character background and character design were all those Marvel handbooks and who's who's mm-hmm. from DC. Um, at a young age, this was probably the, so the, I'm going to age myself, the <laughs> early 80s. Right. This is the early 80s where they started putting that stuff out on a regular basis. Yeah. Um, and Spider-Man, Captain America, Superman, Batman just absorbed it all and yeah. started um, – to, to not only read, but also write and draw my own stuff. I would grab buddies in elementary school and say, hey, let's do a comic book together. And within three pages, they had forgotten about it, and I had done 20 pages. <laughs> <laughs> nice. so, so I kind of knew from, a, from an early age that it was, that it was something that I wanted to do. I was that, uh, that uh, teenager that got yelled at for drawing Batman on my math homework. Mm-hmm. Um, and it just continued. Um, went to – always knew that I wanted to – also teach so as i was going to school to get my teaching degree still had comics on the brain still putting things together still um having the getting those concepts together for when i knew that i was ready to be able to tell the stories that i wanted to tell started teaching about oh geez 15 years ago yeah um uh, did a lot of graphic design work in my 20s so worked as a graphic designer for about 10 12 years in my 20s Uh, became a teacher about 15 years ago, uh, and I'd say about five or six years ago, started getting into some small press stuff, finding places yeah. where I could do some anthology work, three, four pages to start off with. And after a few, uh, maybe out of about a year, a little bit more than a year of doing that, I said, uh, you know, I think I'm ready to start putting together my stories. Mm-hmm. Uh, and immediately uh, started putting together the first issue of The Offspring, uh, and it came out, I think, came out really well. I've gotten a lot of great comments, a lot of uh, great critiques on uh, The Offspring, um, the, all the issues that I put out, uh, and the, the other one-shots and graphic novels and four-issue p- miniseries that I yeah. put out. So it, it really just keeps me, even, the, even when I get criticism, it just keeps me going. Sure. Uh, because you learn from it, you 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 soak it in, and you say, okay, I, I hear what that person's saying. Let me let me move forward with that criticism and see how it, I can make it, how I can make it and me better. Right. Yeah. Right. What's what's your? Um, I know the corrected handed comics is uh, is the uh, imprint. Is that is that something that you uh, created, or is that something that a bunch of your friend you guys got together? Or, you know, business part. How, how did that come about? Yeah, I, it's my creation. Um, I am left handed. Mm. So it's not for me. It's not right-handed and left-handed. It's right. left, right-handed and correct-handed. <laughs> so uh, as a, I worked as a server in my early twenties in restaurants, also 
and uh, um, at least three or four times a night, I'd be writing down orders, and somebody would go, oh, you're a lefty, oh, you're a southpaw, and I'd get all these stories about left-handed people, why left-handed people were weird or right. wrong or whatever, you know, whatever it is. Um, and uh, I started just saying, oh, I'm not left-handed, I'm correct-handed. Right. <laughs> and then, oh, Frank, oh, 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 funny, that's funny. And it just always <laughs> stuck to me as a little left-handed person joke. Right. Yeah. Um, and when I was coming up with the idea for my, I had five or six other ideas of what I wanted to, what I wanted to call the company. Yeah. And uh, um, at some point, somebody made a left-handed joke to me. And I said, mm. no, it's, I'm correct-handed. And I said, that's it. Correct hand comics. That's it. I mean, it's, it's the visuals already there. The hand, I you know, just uh, put started putting it all together, and it it really fell uh, all fell into place from there. That's awesome. Nice. That's awesome. So what was the first comic you've ever read? I ever wrote. Um, no, read. You know, that's a good. Oh, uh, read. First ever I've ever read. Gosh, I would have to say that I was a big fan of. Again, I'm going to age myself. <laughs> Uh, the, the the Archie comics. I knew I said Archie's. <laughs> so my yeah, brother and I yeah. would ride our bikes. I was about eleven. Right. Uh, this was again the early eighties. Yes. Uh, we would ride our bikes uh, downtown to where I lived in a small town in in Ohio, and uh, we would go. He loved baseball cards, and I loved comic books. So we uh, went to this place called the Coin Shop. Uh, that had like it was it had a barred gate that you had to be buzzed into so it was always really creepy getting into an old guy in the back, you know, in the back and he like look in and he'd be eating, drinking his diet coke and eating a sub sandwich or something just really like yeah. really, really cool so he'd buzz us in and and i'd go directly to the the comics and he usually had a stack of archies a stack of mighty mouse Mm. A stack of uh, of old school, not so much superheroes at the time, but he would every once in a while have some Spider Man, uh, and from there, I did, it was years of going to this guy and reading all these Archie comics. Found out about two or three years of of going to the Archie comics that around the corner there was a malt shop that had magazines and brand new comics. <laughs> I was reading were probably four or five years old. So uh, once I found those brand new comics, it was the old Green Lantern and Spider-Man and Captain America and all nice. that. You, I, I right. wouldn't go anywhere else. Uh, I probably drove the the uh, the people behind the counter crazy, sitting there drinking a a, a, a malt milkshake and reading <laughs> all my comic books that I just bought right there. So that's awesome. Uh, so good. It was a good childhood. I got yelled at every once in a while for buying too many comics, but right, yeah. No, th those RG digests were the best, man. I used to, I used to like getting the the, the big digest books of uh, of RG. Those were fun. Oh yeah, loved them. Yeah, loved them. yeah. yeah. It's all, I'm, a, I'm a Betty guy. I'm a oh, Betty yeah, guy. yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. I'm, kicked out here. I'm a Betty guy. That's <laughs> awesome. So, what? At what age were you when you actually um, read the first Archie books? Probably nine. And eight, and how nine. long after before you started tinkering with creating your own comics? Yeah, I'd say probably fairly soon. Um, but once I really started diving into superheroes, and, and clearly I watched Spider-Man growing up and, uh, you know, the old Fantastic Four uh, TV show, the old cartoons um, and things like that. Loved things like um, He-Man and Thundercats and oh, yeah. Silver Hawk. Oh, and yeah. again, amazing myself. Um, loved all. We're, we're right uh, there with you. We're right there with yeah. you, man. Oh, yeah. George is right there with you. <laughs> yeah, I'm not a yes, I loved yes, it. Loved yes, it. Yeah, any, yeah. any of that, oh, yeah. those you know, swords and sorcery and stuff like that. Really loved it. Um, I'd say probably fairly quickly. Um, I can remember the first character I ever made. Actually, oh, it was nice. kind of GI Joe, mm -hmm. so uh, Great American Hero, right? Yes. And uh, uh, it was kind of like a ninja, uh, snake eyes type character. Mm -hmm. And I, I remember the, the mask had, he had like the goggles on, but I wanted to do something different. I was thinking in my eight year old brain, I want to do something different. So what I did was made one side long sleeves and the other side short sleeves. <laughs> So then I got to do it on the legs too. So one side of his legs, wow. of course, the other side, man. I'm like, this is the coolest character that's ever been created. <laughs> I can't remember his name, but I can remember. That's a bad Did you did you ever did you ever want to work for any of the of the uh of like the big two or like did you ever or did you always want to create your own stuff? Well, yeah, a little bit of both. Like if if um you know if if Marvel came knocking or DC. DC came knocking on my door. I'm a big DC guy. Mm -hmm. um, I would say that DC has been in the forefront more than Marvel. We love the Marvel characters, um, but um, DC has always been uh, 
the way that I went, uh, the side that I went to. Um, but if, if anybody saw my stuff or I started submitting and I've submitted stuff, you know, in my twenties and things like that. Um, but as I, you know, submit stuff and I learn and I talk, I've talked to like, um, uh, Joe Kubert, who who ran the Joe mm-hmm. Kubert School, I took many classes from him, and actually met him a few times oh. at a convention. Sat down, was able to talk to him and show him my work, and say, you know, one of the best things he ever, you know, he said, he said, look, I can sit here and we can talk form and we can talk panels and we can talk all that all you want, but in the end, I'm not going to be able to to tell you everything. <clears throat> how to do everything 100% right, because there is no 100% right. Hmm. You, I can tell you if anatomy is a little skewed, if maybe your panels can be a little bit more dynamic, those kind of things. But in the end, nobody's going to be able to tell you right or wrong in your stories. That's up for you to decide and just keep pushing forward. Hmm. And it was, you know, I was really lucky because it was at a ah. convention that wasn't too busy. He sat and talked to me for an hour. Wow. And it was uh, That's priceless. Busy. Um, that, wow. that I was able to sit and just talk with him. And we talked comics, we talked story structure, we talked paneling, Ooh. we talked anatomy, we talked, we talked all, all those things. Um, and I, I, I walked away thinking, I wish somebody was recording that. I would watch that every <laughs> single day. I would watch yeah. it every single day. That's awesome. Um, but it's, it's uh, things like that, being able to go to creators and, uh, and to be able to learn from other creators, whether it's indie comic or professional mm-hmm. and uh, or the big boys. And um, if, like I said, if Marvel and DC knocked on my door and said, hey, do you have a Superman story? I'd say, yes, I 100% do. Let me write it up. I'll, <laughs> I'll be right back. <laughs> yeah, I'll be right back. So let, me, speak- let me call you. Give me 10 minutes. I'll call you right back. <laughs> so speaking of conventions, what was the first convention you've attended as a fan? And have you attended as, as an exhibitor? Yeah, very small uh, conventions. I actually started getting – my plan was – um, before all the weirdness happened right. was to really start really work on content, really be able to get a good amount of content out. So when I had my tables ready to go, I had the content I had all my backboard stuff. I had, I had the cards and I had all the photos to be able to show, you know, the postcards to be able to hand out as freebies, all that stuff. Um, and by the time I was ready, COVID hit. Yeah. Damn. So I was able to do one or two very small conventions is like gearing up, you know, gearing up to be able to go to some of the bigger ones. Right. Yeah. Um, but I really haven't been able to do any bigger conventions with some of my stuff. So my focus has just been continuing to create content. I would say the first convention I ever went to, um, I was probably 18 years old. Um, Cause a little later, like I said, I grew up in a small town in Ohio. So there was, what wasn't really conventions there, but I was 18 years old. And told my parents that I wanted to go to a convention, and I was 18, so I could do what I want, but still living at home. Uh, told my parents, the care parents, I wanted to drive to a convention in in Chicago, mm. and uh, they said you go, and I said okay, I did, and I, so I went to the big convention, uh, Chicago Con, mm. um, and it was again an amazing experience. Yeah. Got to talk to a bunch of creators. Phil Jimenez was one of the creators that I that did uh, sat down five minutes or so, three or five, sure. three or four minutes to be able to talk to each people that were standing in line with portfolios for those <laughs> portfolios. But again, it was an ama- amazing experience to be able to hear it from the horse's mouth. Yeah. Um, and, and a lot of those those uh, critiques and things that they said, I still think about today to be able to make sure um, that I'm on the right track. Yeah. So yeah, definitely. going to a con and showing – you know, you, you're not a working professional, your first time going to a con and you take your portfolio. It's very intimidating. Oh, so, yeah. so what, how did you, you know, muster up the courage to be able to go and open up your portfolio to these pros? Courage was never my problem. <laughs> um, I would, I would, my parents would say that maybe I needed to dial back a little bit. <laughs> As a kid, um, but um, yeah, it was never really a. I never minded going up to people, um, no matter who they were. Uh, I'd go up to people and say, "Hi, my name's David. Here, let's take a look at this. Uh, if you love it, you hate it, great. Just tell me why." Right. Um, and uh, and I would do that often at, at conventions, um, and uh, uh, loved it. Sometimes I would get the "Don't bother me, kid." Mm-hmm. Uh, which was okay, you know, they're humans, so, so, so the, uh, okay, I understand. <laughs> sorry, so sorry to uh, interrupt you. Um, but it really did inform me as as a creator that if, uh, especially like kids, when I as a teacher, mm-hmm. when young kids come up and see that you create comic books, how to be able to 
um, instill in them the right. same I, the same love of comics that that people instilled in the creators, the creators instilled in me. Right. Um, so if I ever uh, get to a point where somebody comes up and starts asking me questions and I shoo shoo them away, um, then I'm not doing my job as a, yeah. as, a as an advocate. Uh, for creating comic books and really just imagination as a whole. Yeah. Um, so my hope is that um, creators and, and many more creators have been willing with open arms to be able to talk than, than you know, shooing, shooing people, me away. Mm-hmm. But um, to be able to be that kind of creator uh, for especially little kids, teenagers that want to want to help build, you know, what they're doing and build their courage to be able to come up to a creator um, is really, really important to me. And I, I hope that's when the people, uh, when kids who uh, write and draw um, see that I do that also and come up and ask me questions that they feel like they've not only learned something, but um, gained an advocate for what they're trying to do also. Absolutely. Absolutely. And Dave, quick question for you. Are you an artist that writes or a writer that draws? The visuals are always first. Okay. The visuals are always first. I've, I've been a writer first, uh, or excuse me, an artist first. When I was probably about, 13 or 14, um, it was, maybe it was a little later than that, maybe 15 or so. Um, one of the, the, the uh, creators that got me under, that got me to understand that as a writer or as an artist, I did not just need to draw. I could also mm-hmm. write with Dan Jurgens, okay. um, who, who uh, wrote Superman, drew Superman, created Booster Gold and a plethora of other characters. Yeah. Um, and when I started reading stuff like him, I knew that I could tell, I knew that I wanted to tell stories, but I, yeah. I was, was kind of looking for writers to help me do it. Yeah. But that was really my, my um, like aha moment to say, I don't need other people to write my stories for me. Yeah. I'm going to write my own. So from then on, I, I just started reading everything that I could, not just comic books, but reading every kind of book, you know, whether it's romance or superhero or, or action and adventure, or the, yeah. I really love the choose your own adventures as a kid. Oh, I remember uh, those. Mysteries, you know, uh, uh, detective stuff. I love the Hardy Boys growing oh, yeah. up. Um, those kind of things. Uh, just tried to get as many of those books as I can. I tried to continue that into my 20s and 30s mm-hmm. to read all the classics. Yeah. Um, War, World War II, Gone with the Wind, you know, anything that I could get my hands on to be able to see storytelling from all different, uh, from all different perspectives. Um, and I hope to think I still do that because yeah. I'm, I'm, I will like to think of myself as a lifelong learner and want mm-hmm. to continue growing uh, yes. until I don't, not, can't grow anymore. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. So tell us about your series. So The Offspring is um, an action thriller about three young adults who grew up together in essentially an orphanage. They don't really have orphanages anymore, so it's called an alternative school where they were taken away from their parents because they were abused mentally, physically, emotionally, somehow. Each of them were abused differently um, in some different facet. They came to realize when they started reaching puberty that the way they were abused they started to develop powers based on that abuse. So one of the characters, Vince, uh, he is able to, when he was abused, his mother, who was into drugs, like I said, some of it's a little heavy. Some of it can get Mm -hmm. a little bit heavy. Mm -hmm. Um, So uh, his mother was very into drugs, no father figure around. And whenever she disciplined him, she would throw hot water on him and burn him. So as he started to reach puberty, he... um, started to learn how to, started to learn that he could control the water, not only around him, but also the water in his body. Wow. So he was able to heat, cool, throw out, um, stop water in midair, um, and he started to develop these powers as puberty got closer and closer and closer. One of the other characters, Sarah, uh, was physically and mentally abused. Uh, mm-hmm. We open up the series with her. She is being uh, chased by her father who um, is about to abuse her. Mm. She closes her eyes to try to stop from being able to be in that situation, at least in her mind. She opens her eyes back up and her father has been, um, let's say, her father has been exploded in a very sensitive area. 
Oh. <laughs> so we start to turn to realize that that as how they were abused is how these powers start to manifest. Mm. So as they come, these three characters come together in the alternative school, they start to realize that they not, they're not just connected by the fact that they all have these super these powers, these abilities. They start to realize that the three of them are connected more in a mental way also, not just from their backgrounds. So as they grow and they change, they start to, they break apart and come back together and break apart and come back together and realize that the three of them are connected somehow. We're getting to the point of the story now that we're starting to realize why they're connected and realize that the three of them, there's one missing mm. that's got to come together to be able to create um, this fourth character who is going to take them, their mental uh, connection, and their abilities to the next level. And we start to find out why uh, they have these abilities and who gave them to um, them and what they could do with them and how uh, they, and the reason why they have these abilities in the first place. Yeah, I, I'm amazed by the amount of issues that you have out there, Dave. Like, and, and I know from being an independent, um, you know, creator and publisher ourselves, I know that these things take time and these books are not thin. I mean, you're talking about 28, 24, 30. I saw one 38 pages long. So yeah. how do you find the time to do all of this while having a full-time job? And you know what I mean? Like, what, how do you break up your day? What, what's your secret? Yeah, a, a very um, forgiving wife and two children. <laughs> uh, that's amazing. <laughs> um, I'm I'm really lucky that that I do have um, my wife and kids understand that it's a passion for me, and they they mm -hmm. they give me the time when the door is shut. Daddy's drawing, leave mm -hmm. him alone. Uh, I do as a as a school teacher also. While while the school people always say, "Oh, you only work you know ten at ten months out of the year." No, we don't. We work mm -hmm. we work twelve months out of the year. Sometimes we work a lot longer than that. Um, sometimes you can cram 13 months of work into the 12 months uh, for as a teacher. But I am lucky to be able to have a job um, where I'm constantly drawing, whether it's constantly drawing right. with kids to be able to teach you those concepts. So it really just kind of continues. So when I get home some days or weekends or if we have a whole long three-day weekend or it's, you know, uh, Christmas break or uh, uh, Thanksgiving break or winter break or whatever break it is, um, I can find the time to be able to sit down and bust out a few pages. And yeah. as the, the writer, uh, writer, the, the penciler, the inker, the letterer, the colorist. Yeah, you want me to show. Uh, yeah, I've really gotten into a groove where it's, um, where it's if I sit down, if I know I sit, I'm going to sit down for an hour, I can get as much done as I possibly can on that hour. As, you know, as I'm saying that, for issue 14 of The Offspring, I was mm -hmm. so lucky to be able to find a, a, a colorist who does so much more than coloring. He's a writer, he's, he's an artist also, he's a publisher. His name is Chris McGauley, mm -hmm. and he is working right now with uh, the Bram Stoker estate, the Dracula um, wow. estate, uh, to be able to come up with different stories using that basic idea of Dracula. He's also working with uh, the people who are in charge of James, James Bond, Ian Fleming's character, James Bond. Mm -hmm. uh, and he is um, has been such a... Um, a positive influence uh to be able to keep me moving forward he called me up one day and said i love what you're doing do you need a colorist um and i said yes i do <laughs> <laughs> um and he said great let's work together um and it's it's Sweet. gotten to the point where where he his his colors in issue 14 um really helped me to be able to focus on all the other aspects of it to be able to yeah. take it to the next level and i think that the build-up to issues 11, 12, and 13 um, were exactly what I wanted them to do. But once I got to issue 11, that's when it really started busting right. out. And then issue 14 was an issue. I never I never thought I'd get to this uh, section because, like you said, it's hard. It's hard. <laughs> to be able it's to get hard. this many issues out. Yes. So to be able to get to this issue in issue 14 where they actually travel back in time to the Civil War, mm. um, which is a story I've had in my brain since I was – 18 years old. <laughs> wow. Clearly it's been adjusted as I, as I matured the story matured also. Right. Wow. Um, I hope, uh, but, uh, <laughs> uh, but it was a story that I really was hopeful to be able to get to. And when I did actually get to it, it was, it was quite the moment to be able to know that, the, that I was going to be able to tell this story and get this, this story out to the world. It's amazing. It's been awesome. And, and so the offspring's going to continue. It doesn't stop at yeah. 14. You have 15 and it's going to be an ongoing yeah, 50 issues. I plan on getting, I thought that 50 was a good, reasonable, reachable number for an independent 
uh, for an independent co- uh, creator Good. like myself. Good. Um, it's clearly going to take me a few years. I get about six books out a year. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. do the math. I'm not a math guy. <laughs> but but here, here's the thing. You, you're you not just doing The Offspring. You have other titles. And the other one is, you know, Will Aliens Do My Homework. So tell us a little bit about, about that book. Yeah, I actually have the cover. Hey, let me show it off here. So Will Aliens Do My Homework was our, was our third. Um, it was our third 24-page uh, one-shot I put out, I Won't Stop, which is a superhero uh, tale, but kind of putting superheroes kind of on its head, yeah. which I really like. And then I had, I'm a big fan of Frank Sinatra, um, the old noir thriller, yep. mm-hmm. Frank Sinatra, like Suddenly and Lady in Cement. So I created Shady Lady, Shady Lady. Um, which is a really a, a black and white uh, noir thriller. And it deals with a lot of the contemporary. It's kind of done in an old school style, mm-hmm. but it talks a lot about contemporary issues that we've been dealing with as a culture yeah. really for the last 200 years yeah. already. We need to yeah. get it together. Mm-hmm. Um, but it deals with a lot of the things that you'd see in the news um, about how people treat each other. Um, so it's a story. The Shady Lady is a story of a woman who has her, has very much her own issues, but decides to use a, a not she's no it's not superhero or anything but she's definitely a strong female lead um that reaches out that doesn't ignore issues that she sees happening or around her and then we come to find out that she's got her own issues and the end of the story is really her cultivation of, of these of these kind of little vignettes that all work together to get to the end of her story um, but still, there's so much more there there. So if Shady Lady takes off and people want to see more of this character, sure. I have a billion other stories to be able to tell with it. <laughs> Same thing with I Won't Stop. Um, this is a character. It's, it's very much a, a, I guess I'll use the word, cliched superhero uh, kind of look to him, but, yeah. uh, but I think different enough to be able to separate him from Superman and, and um, Thor or other, other superheroes like that. Yeah. And his name is Spiral. And if his um, name, I wanted his name to be able to kind of give you a hint of what happens to him in the story. Right. It kind of spirals down <laughs> the other story. And I Won't Stop is about him, the character Spiral, who decides because of um, a, uh, a event that happened to him that destroyed his entire life, decides that he's not going to worry about alter ego. He's not going to worry about a day job. He's not going to worry about friends. His job now is to save everybody everywhere all the time so he's he won't stop so it really is about a psychological that psychological uh, ramifications of with great power comes great responsibility right so if you take that to heart and you real you use your power to consistently worry about everybody else how can that how does that psychologically and physically affect you yeah. Um, and that's the story that I wanted to tell with I Won't Stop. I didn't want to just tell a superhero story. I wanted to do something a little different. And I think I did that with I Won't yeah. Stop. And I've got a lot of positive feedback on it. Yeah, it sounds like then, it. Like it sounds said, like yeah. it. Then uh, uh, it will aliens do my homework um, mm-hmm. after Shady Lady and, uh, um, and I Won't Stop, which were a little deeper. I wanted to do something a little bit more fun. And this was mm-hmm. the opportunity to be able to make an art teacher the hero of the story. Nice. Uh, so the art teacher is sitting in school. She's having a bad day to begin with. She's walking to school through a blizzard. She gets splashed with water. She's late for school and gets yelled at by her principal. And Ugh. she's thinking in her brain, how could this day get any worse? Yeah, should they get attacked by it? <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I didn't go much into the aliens stuff. Um, because my plan is to kind of sh- tell that story again, but from the other side, uh, huh. eventually. So um, it really was the focus on this teacher and these kids, um, and to be able to, from the from the perspective of a teacher, uh, to show how how these kids and this teacher would react to this situation, how right. kids are always going to be kids, mm-hmm. how trying to wrangle kids is the hardest job <laughs> in the world, <laughs> um, and trying to wrangle kids at, through an alien invasion would be uh, almost nigh impossible. So it's a little bit more of a lighthearted book. Um, it's got layer. I think it's got layers to it, but it's, it's definitely more lighthearted than the other three books. Yeah. Especially because my next one shot is going to be a, a slasher. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you just you hit all the genres. <laughs> yeah, I'm going through all the genres. <laughs> I'm going to do it. Um, the next one is actually going to be a slasher. I think I've got a really cool slasher villain uh, called the Sock Hop Killer. Okay. And she um, is the poodle skirts and the scarf 
and the you know 50s like doo-wop mm. type music you know if you get right. that vibe um and i think i've got a really interesting story uh with a buddy of mine paul dulski who uh, does the everything horror podcast uh we kind of were talking one day i had this concept and i called him up and said i said i think you're the guy to help me out with this and he gave me some great like right off the bat within five minutes we had a, a, a really cool slasher it's got some of the tropes because yeah. everybody loves the tropes sure but it's yeah. also got new stuff that i think the people will really like and that's probably fingers crossed march Okay. March. All right. Nice. You work fast. You work fast. Yeah. Yeah. Knocking it out. <laughs> Knocking it out the park. My 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 uh, my mantra is quick but quality. There you go. There you go. There you go. <laughs> Dave, I'm exhausted just listening to all the stuff you got going on. <laughs> I'm like, yeah. holy cow! But I'm ha- man, I'm happy to see this. This is amazing, man. Yeah, I never know how much time I'm gonna get, so I like to be able to get it all out at once. Oh, you got a lot <laughs> I love it. And for- and for everyone watching uh, the interview, definitely check out corrected, uh, CorrectHandedComics.com. All of your books can be purchased on the website, and it takes you into a link um, to Amazon. So if you have Prime, those things are coming. You know they're going to make it. You know, yeah, Amazon's yeah. taking over. So um, You can watch my Facebook page. From time to time, I like to do free giveaways. So from time nice. to time, if I reach a certain level on Facebook, like uh, uh, fan base wise or likes or comments or whatever it is, I'll put out a uh, an all call just says, hey, the next 10 people that DM me, you'll get a free digital copy of whatever book I happen nice. to be pawning out that, that month. That's perfect. awesome. That, that is, is awesome. Perfect. Yes. So uh, outside of Facebook, where else can they, are you on any other social platforms? Yeah, yeah. So I'm on Twitter at correct underscore handed. Um, my Instagram is also the same thing, correct underscore handed. Uh, I am on TikTok, which I found has been very helpful to be able to get a, a little bit more of a fan base. I think um, a TikTok is maybe not a, um, a, a utilized as much as it should be for yeah. creators, you know, in, in my situation. Or maybe everybody else knows that I'm late to the party. I don't know. <laughs> uh, but, uh, but you can find me uh, actually on my, my name, David Whalen, on TikTok. And then uh, my LinkedIn account. Uh, is uh, David Whalen as well. There you uh, go. Outstanding. Outstanding. So, I mean, this is a great, I mean, I mean, you, I was talking to George earlier uh, today about having a contest of how much content can one man put out in one day. And I was like, and, and, and it, it, here comes David out of nowhere you know, with the cape on. He's like, what? Who said putting out content? Hold my beer. I got this. <laughs> I just one day said I'm sick and tired of waiting. I'm gonna put out as much content as I possibly can, you know, Good for you, man. and try to get out as many fun stories as I possibly can. And I'm working on like you know, offspring, like I said, at least six mm-hmm. issues a, a year. Yeah. Um, and that seems to be going okay. And then in between some one shots, I've actually got a, uh, a 100, another 100 page graphic novel coming out. I have. Uh, one with a buddy of mine, Brian Menard. The loved Ones, yeah, I like Dojo that. Kun Comics, who was the owner of Dojo Kun Comics, mm. called The Loved Ones. It was the first 100 pager I put out. Oh, boy, it was it was a um, – my fingers were blistered by the time I was done with it. But it was worth it. I, it came out if you like um, – like classic horror move monsters, yeah. like Dracula, vampire, Wolfman, you know, witches, those kind of stuff. This is about – The Loved Ones is about the kids of – those classic oh, nice. movie monsters okay. who are abandoned by their parents and the kids hunt their parents. Oh, wow. And they're brought up. They're actually brought up by a Van Helsing type character, like a monster hunter type character. Mm-hmm. So it's like a nurture versus nature situation where they're being brought up by somebody who cares for them, who loves them, but it's constantly um, showing them or, or making them think that they are monsters are bad. So they must be bad. So it's this like nurture versus nature situation, um, and uh, it works out for for some of the kids. It works out well for some of the kids. It does not work out well, and that's all I'll say about that. But I have another graphic novel that I hope for twenty twenty to start in twenty twenty one to start this year and have out in twenty twenty two. Um, I don't want to say much about it, okay. um, but as for a shout out for my little brother who watches my little brother, he's 33, <laughs> uh, <laughs> for my little brother who watches from time to time, it's based actually off of the look of one of the characters. The main character is based off of his son who is a spitfire. That is awesome. Man. Nice. That so is... in the fall, when you're ready to talk about it, come Let's on, cast the craze and, uh, yeah. come back and we'll talk about it. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. This has been a great episode. Thank you again for, um, being on Cast the Crazy and reaching out. And uh, again, 
we'll have your links in the bio and um we'll talk to you soon thank you guys very much i really appreciate it you thank it, you buddy. dave thanks a lot keep creating man thank you appreciate it all right and we're back with cast the craze and we um the guy's a monster a monster Dude. He's got so much stuff, man. I, I love it. I love it. Correct handed comics. Guys, yeah. got to check it out. Definitely check it out. He's got tons, tons of stuff on the website. Um, he's got, you know, comics, graphic novels, mini series, one shots. I mean, he's got it all. So definitely, definitely check it out. And thank you, Dave, for being on the show. That was amazing, man. Yes, very cool. Very cool. Very cool. And so, all this right. is the point where we get to. Uh... Shut it out. Got the it. Shameless plug time. Yeah. Let's do this. Let's see if I find it. You've been plugged. You've been plugged. You've been plugged, <laughs> my man. So check it out. So today, uh, the featured person who's been plugged is a very good friend of mine. His name is Victor Claudio. I hope that's the one you played. Uh, <laughs> Victor Claudio is yes, an <laughs> artist, uh, colorist. And he actually worked on some of the stuff on uh, you know, Forbidden's coming out, and, and he actually uh, did some work on that. He was uh, a member of the craze back in the days. Yeah, 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 way back in the days. And so, yeah, big shout out to Victor Claudio. Everybody, check him out. He, you can follow him on IG at Victor Claudio eight two eight. He's also on Facebook as Victor Claudio. That's C L A U D I O, and he's open for commissions. He does. And bingo uh, he, has his name. He's an on. artist. And he's a colorist. <laughs> Big shout out to him because he did the coloring on uh, my uh, character there for the shameless plug. So definitely, definitely uh, check him out. And so, Victor Claudio, you've been plugged, my friend. You've Thank been you plugged. You've been plugged, baby. Uh, so we're getting <laughs> close to the wrap up of Cast the Craze. We'd like to thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this episode and you enjoyed our guest, um, please give us a thumb up. Hit that like button. Um, subscribe if you have not already forward it to a friend make a recommend and don't forget when this we're not just on youtube we're also if you're if you're on the road and you're driving you can't watch video we're everywhere we're on iHeartRadio. we're on spotify we're on apple we're on amazon so uh download the audio versions of this episode as well and follow us there you know you know the more that we move up in the rankings the better it is for cast the crazy and we can continue to put out more content speaking of content if you have a book if you have a song, if you're a content creator, an artist, a creative, an independent you know, entrepreneur, and you want to find a way to uh, promote your stuff and the algorithms not working on IG or Facebook when you pull those ads, but you know what? We offer sponsorship for 30 seconds. You create a commercial, you send it over to us, you pick the episodes, you know how many episodes you want. Hit the link that's in the summary. Head over to our sponsorship page and you can sponsor a show for a mere $10. You can sponsor a show today oh. for a mere 10 bucks. Can you believe that stuff? Oh. Man, I'm it's giving it away. I'm like Crazy dude. Eddie, right? Dude. So, <laughs> crazy Eddie. Crazy the price Eddie. is already insane. insane, right? <laughs> so, I'm giving it away. So, and you can cross sponsor. sponsor. You, you can, can sponsor. sponsor an entire month or you can say, you know what? I want to sponsor one week, but I want on three different shows. You can get on what's in the box. On guest, uh, for what was it? Um, the crazy ten or less. And what better way for a show to start than by saying this episode of What's in the Box was sponsored by? Sponsored by. And your commercial comes up. So That's for true. more info, hit that link in the bottom. Head over to uh, our page, and it'll tell you everything you need to know. And it's just simple as picking and selecting, and it'll take you right to PayPal, and you lock it in, and you send us an email uh, with your audio or video promo. Um, yeah. Yes. Well and said, Sam. Take 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 a breath. Woo! That yes, was good. Yes, that I was know. money. That was money. We're gonna be doing that every show. Er, uh, <laughs> er, show, er, show. Which we're oh, we're man. growing. We're growing. We're growing, man. We're growing. And stay. And, and you know, tune in next week. We. I can't tell you who the guest is gonna be, but we're gonna have a guest. We're gonna have a topic. We're gonna have a, a shameless plug. We're gonna have some indie news. It's growing. We're getting bigger. Hit the like button. Share the channel. Uh, subscribe, and we'll see you next week. See you next time. <laughs> see you next week. <laughs> I'm Sam the Crazy Man Vera. I'm George the Dreamer Medina. And we are Crazy. No, I was talking about my friend Aquise. I met him the other day.
name, say my name. Say my name. Say my name. Right? <laughs> this is what you were thinking? <laughs> oh, oh you are listening. Are you describing? Listen, I'm the. Yes, yes. You're listening to Catch the Craze. 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 You are listening to Catch the Craze. Catch the Craze. You're listening to Catch the Craze. Bobby. Candy girl.